Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week it's a night on the hill with Jason Doyle and hunting buddy Will on the hunt for seeker hinds and calves. Plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. This evening, it's the end of February. Um, this is usually an area I hunt in the morning because it's quite a long walk out with maybe five or six kilometres to where the where the deer usually are. But just to be different this time, we're gonna we're gonna walk out in the evening. It's three o'clock now. We've a couple of hours of light left, and we're gonna camp and see if we can knock a bit of crack out of that. So a little bit foggy on the tops, but we're gonna work our way out there. Might pick up an animal on the way out. Um, set up camp hopefully with maybe an hour left of light have a scout around and maybe a hunt this evening and um, if not then first thing in the morning have a good walk on the hill pick up a seeker hopefully maybe a hybrid but should be plenty there around it's the time of year where they're moving strong but um, yes yeah, first time I'll have camped and hunted and doing this really in preparation for a New Zealand trip we have coming up in April so just to test out the gear see if what we have is up to the job and see if we need to get any new gear but um, yeah so crack on now have all the stuff with us so get walking this isn't going to be easy camping and hunting on the hill Jason and stalking buddy Will O'Meara are truly fending for themselves they seem in good spirits and the sun has come out perhaps those warm outer layers won't be needed after all Warm. It's getting there, Jason. Nice uh, February stroll out in the mountains. What more could you ask for? We were expecting two degrees and we've got 15. <laughs> well, we won't be cold tonight, anyway, that's for sure. Did you bring midge spray? <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's not just the sun we want to see, it's deer. They show up on cue, but things aren't as we hoped. Well, we spotted our first couple of animals way out here behind me, about a, about a mile away. Um, unfortunately, they're not on on ground we have permission to shoot but um, it's good to see them some fresh footprints on the way in here so there might have been guys in here hunting this morning or earlier today so that probably reduces our chances of getting an animal this evening um, but it's it's clearing nicely out in front of us so we'll crack on we'll find somewhere to camp dump the gear and have a better look on our own ground and see if there's any animals that we can have a crack at this evening if not just be a case of camping and having a good hunt first thing in the morning. Perfect. So we have a good campsite, Jason spotted this perfect spot, bit of bracken indicating this nice dry, it's flat most importantly, so he won't be uh, rolling around tonight in the tent. So we have it marked, we have a good uh, natural terrain, corner of a forest that we can handrail down to find our camping site. We're gonna mark it both on our GPS's as well. Um, so that we can find it when we come back because it'll probably be after dark. So, on to the hunt. The stalk is on and Jason's clearly having the time of his life. He's so keen to stalk on ahead, he's left Will to carry out filming duties. Aren't you meant to take it easy for the guests, Jason? Trying to fit you into this little screen is the problem. Cheeky bath. You're so tall. <laughs> well, we're just starting to climb up onto the high ground here. 
we've come over to the left hand boundary just to keep the wind right so we're going to head up the boundary get to the high ground and get a look down into the right hand side with the wind in our face no animals spotted as yet but we're pretty hopeful there's three or four little bowls as we climb up so hopefully there'll be something in there time presses on and the exertion of a quick stalk is taking its toll. Finally, we get some luck. Well, we've just spotted half a dozen or more deer on the skyline way up there. They're about two and a half, three k away. Um, not sure we have enough light to, to get there this evening. They're moving down towards us, but we're going to crack on. We might come across something between here and there. But we're going to push on hard to see if we can get up there before dark and get a shot at him. So I um, put the camera away now, hopefully next time we check in we should be close enough. Well, those deer we saw on the skyline, um, we were making our way to them, making good progress and cloud has just come in. We were within, probably within a thousand yards of them, but the cloud has just come in solid. It, um, it doesn't even look like it's going to lift. So we're not, rather than go up into the cloud and push them, we'll leave that area for the morning. We're just going to spin over right now into the wind, get a look at the far side of the ground, and that'll probably do us for this evening. It's starting to get dark, so if we don't at least spot animals within the next 10-15 minutes, we'll leave it because by the time we make up the ground on them, it's going to be dark. This is Last Chance Saloon. Visibility is poor, but we press on in her but everything needs to go right if we're to get a shot. Well, we've just come over the saddle here and there's a good group of hinds on this far bank. Now they're offside, they're the far side of our boundary. So there's a good chance they might move across here overnight. But we're just sitting watching them. I spotted a hind and a calf right down in the bottom of the valley, just on our side of the boundary. So they're 600 yards at the moment. Um, it's not a great approach. We're, we're in wide open ground coming down to them. But they're feeding strong and it's coming on dark. So we might try and just quietly walk straight down towards them. Wind is perfect. And if we can get to over 250 yards, we should be in with a good chance of a, of a shot. We're closing the distance now. The worst thing we can do is give ourselves away and spook the deer. So we go down to a crawl for the last few yards. For once, luck is on our side. The deer haven't moved and there's a perfect beast to take, right in full view. Jason finally lets Will step it to the fore and he gets a good shooting rest from the bipod. This is it. It doesn't go more than a few yards. The gecko round has done its job, but we're not done yet. With the other deer stopping to have a look, we could put a second one on the ground. You get a range on that second one, Jason. 275 at the moment. 0.6. After a few anxious seconds, this one's down too. Will showed his stalking prowess with some composed shooting under pressure. So, uh, Jason led the stalk into those animals. We got into a firing position that was close enough, but we decided that the uh, 270 that I'm firing would be a better option because there is a little bit of cover and uh, the distance was going to be in or around 200 yards. So, we chose the 270 over the 243. We ranged the first animal at 190, got into position. My rifle is zeroed at 200. The first animal we took was a calf, which is best practice. So the calf um, dropped to the shot. I was aiming where the shoulder meets the neck. Um, I wanted a good target there, maybe clip the vitals and 
um, the spine. So that looked like what it did. Um, animals ran out to the right, the stag leading the hind. Got Jason to get a range on it at 275. I put on my clicks for 280, which would be 0.6 mil uh, of elevation. Uh, windage isn't an issue here. The wind is in our face um, on the animal and went for a shoulder shot. But we saw it, a typical heart and lung style shot where it ran, reared, bucked and that. And to me, it looked like a lung shot, but we'll get confirmation uh, when we get up there. Well, I'm actually going to leave Will now to sort this hind out. I know it looks bright on the on the film, um, but this camera picks up a lot of light. We're actually starting to struggle for light now, so I'm going to leave him sorting the hind out. I'm going to head down to the river, have a real good mark on where the calf is. It dropped on the spot, so I should have no problem finding it. So I'm going to go down by myself and um, and pick that one up and and grab that one. So now, commonly known as a New Zealand backpack. A kiwi backpack. You can, uh, for a little calf, it's handy. You can carry him over your shoulder in the unlikely event that you might forget your drag rope. I didn't forget my drag rope. It's at the <laughs> camp. So now we've simply used this uh, tendon here and freed it from the shin bone and uh, severed it at the knee. So we have this like a T-bar. We put that from the inside to the outside. Um, on the rear hock, which we've made a hole in, like so, as you would to hang it. And the same then on the other side. Yeah. Here we go. Handy carry home. Now, oh. happy hunters. Well, we've just made it back to, to where we're going to camp. Real good walk back. Um, pitch dark, falling and stumbling and rooting around in the, on the hill. We had a couple of falls, had to cross the river a couple of times. Um, we're back now, trying to get the tent stuck up, um, get set up for the night and then have a feed. So Will's just starting to get the gear out, so we'll get our, get our camp set up and check back in again. Back to spirit level. Now, time for a fillet of Sika. Well, that's us finished for the night. Ready to, ready to get some sleep. Had a real good feed. Fresh Sika backstrap, some fried onions, and a few other bits that we brought along. Um, the syndicate I'm in on this ground here. We have a bad bag limit of two animals per trip. So we're now not gonna hunt in the morning. We're just gonna get up nice and early, have some heart and liver for breakfast, pack up our gear and, and hike back out. Yeah, been a really successful outing. Saw plenty of animals, had a good walk. And um, it's great to have Will with me for the first time on the shooting show. Hopefully we'll see more of him. Um, really experienced hunter and a good guy to have around. So hopefully you'll see more of him in the future. He's coming to New Zealand with me. So we'll get a few more shows with him within the next couple of months. But yeah, it's been a, been a good evening and uh, ready for some sleep now. I'm getting hints of juniper, orange peel. Lemon. Grallock. Socks. Grallock. <laughs> <laughs>
The ISSF has formally recommended that these disciplines be removed from the Olympic Games and replaced with a number of mixed team events. This is part of a bid to ensure gender equality since the events are currently men only. But with Double Trap responsible for three of Britain's last five Olympic medals, it could mean a tough future for the sport in the UK. We spoke to prone shooter Ken Parr, who said he fully supported gender equality but didn't think the ISSF was going about it in the right way. And Brits underlined their double trap prowess as two British shooters made it to the final at the first World Cup event in Delhi. James Dedman showed he can cope with the new progressive elimination finals, eventually taking bronze behind Australia's James Willett and home athlete Anka Mithal. Olympic double trap medalist Steve Scott, returning to the venue where he won a Commonwealth gold seven years ago, exited in fourth place. There'll be a full report in the next issue of Clay Shooting. It's been 12 years since the Hunting Act came into effect, and virtually every pack of hounds is still in operation. The Countryside Alliance said the continued activity of hunts proved that the Act is an unworkable and bad piece of legislation based on bigotry and prejudice. There have been no prosecutions involving registered hunts in the last two years, leading the Alliance to brand the ban a pointless and wasteful failure. A spokesperson said we must all continue to pull together until the Hunting Act is consigned to the history books. And finally, another police force has admitted unacceptable delays in processing shotgun and firearms licence applications. Thames Valley Police has called in Basque for assistance, asking it to help get its waiting period down to 60 working days. Basque Firearms Officer Paul Dale said Thames Valley Police has been one of the worst performing forces over the past 12 months, but it is encouraging to see them taking positive action to address the problem and provide the standard of service shooters deserve and pay for. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show. <laughs>